Welcome to No Longer Conformed. I'm Eric Garthy, and we are studying practical Christianity, learning to relate to one another. In this session, we'll be looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 18, comfort one another. Let's uh, read the larger passage there that includes our text. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning with verse 13 down to verse 18. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend with, from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. That verse 18, our text. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Belief in Christ's imminent return was very prominent. The problem in the early church was believers began to die. You see, they all, they all after Christ rose and the Holy Spirit came, they believed that he was coming back soon. But then he didn't come back. Believers began to die and hope was shaken. Second Peter chapter three, Verses 1 through 9, Beloved, I now write to you this second epistle, in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord, of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willingly forget, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world was then that then existed perished, being flooded with, with water. But the heavens and the earth which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and as a thousand, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. A question arose in the church as some died, will the dead share in Jesus Christ's reign? This passage is Paul's answer to the concern. Comfort can be seen in three truths. First, Jesus personally turned sorrow into hope. Verse 13, but I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as those who have no hope, as others who have no hope. Without Jesus Christ, this world makes no sense. Life has no meaning. Death is to be feared. The funeral of a believer is a celebration versus an unbeliever, which is emptiness. Only believers participate in this hope. Therefore, only they are comforted by it. 1 John chapter 5, verse 12, He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. What it, what it is we proclaim when we share the Lord's Supper as a body of believers. We've all come this way as sinners. We all deserve to die. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and the wages of sin is death. 
But the gift of God is eternal life by Christ Jesus because he loves us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And because of God's love, he sent Jesus so we might have eternal life rather than being judged for eternity in hell. And that love was demonstrated on the cross of Calvary for God demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. For with the mouth confession is made, and with the heart we believe unto righteousness. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let me ask you, do you have this hope, this hope of eternal life? Second, Jesus personally turns death into victory. Verse 14, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus died and rose again. God's pattern is always death before life. The pattern is seen in creation from seed to harvest. The seed goes into the ground, it rots, it dies, and then new life comes, and there's a harvest. John, that's what Jesus was talking about in John chapter 12, verses 24 to 26, when he said, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it. And and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him, my father, will honor. Believers follow the same pattern. Resurrection. We must die to sin to be saved. John 3 and verse 33 Talks about being born again. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. We must die to self in order to serve. Luke 9, 23, denying self. Then he said to them, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. <clears throat> and then third, Jesus personally loves us verses 15 to 17 for this we say to you by the word of the lord that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the lord will by no means precede those who are asleep for the lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of god and the dead in christ will rise first those then those then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. The Lord himself will descend. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. John 14 verses 1 through 3. Is, this is what Jesus is talking about when he tells the disciples on that last night before he was betrayed and then he was crucified. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Listen, the dead are not forgotten, but with the Lord. The living will see him personally in his return. Both will be together to meet the Lord. And we're to comfort one another with these truths. You have a great day.